Hello everyone and welcome to part two of the Stock Market Analysis Project Solutions. In part two we're going to take a little aside and focus on that bonus visualization task of actually coding that candlestick chart. If that doesn't interest you, go ahead and hop over to part three where we actually end up doing some financial analysis. Okay, here I am at the Jupyter Notebook at this bonus visualization task. Now as a quick note, what we wanted to do was create some sort of candlestick chart for Ford in January 2012. If you did this for the entire data frame, it's not really going to look good for a candlestick chart. You won't get that much information. You'll just see a bunch of like green and red lines everywhere. So there's also a link here, Finance Demo HTML. And if you click on that link, it'll take you to this page where it essentially just shows you a full example of how to actually create this candlestick chart. So you could have done it many ways, either just directly copy and paste from this example or um, actually use the data frame we provided. So we're going to kind of do a mix of both. A lot of our code is going to come from that example directly, but some of it won't. What we're going to do is start off with some of the imports that are in that example. First one being from matplotlib.finance, I'm going to import candlestick underscore OHLC. So OHLC, that just stands for open, high, low, close, essentially indicating that's the order it expects the array's tuples to come in and we'll actually create a list or array of tuples later on. Then we're going to say from matplotlib.dates import, and we're going to import a couple of things here. We're going to import date formatter. We're going to import date to num, that is date to number, which converts a date time object to a number that matplotlib can understand. Then we'll also import weekday locator day locator, and then in all caps, Monday, which kind of sets uh, what day is Monday of the week. Okay, so all those imports, and a lot of those imports are kind of just following the examples here from these uh, first couple of imports. Next thing we want to do is if we take a look at our Ford data frame right now, if we just take a look at the head of it, we have open, high, low, close, volume, and then total traded from before. Our date right now is still at the index. We want to kind of play around with it and apply some things to it. So let's go ahead and reset this back to be part of a column. So we're going to say is forward underscore reset. And I'm going to set that equal to, first off, let's just grab everywhere that has January values. So we'll just say forward dot LOC and we'll say 2012.01 and whoops. So if we take a look at forward reset right now, you'll notice this is actually all the January values. So we have all the January values, and then we're going to also reset that index. So running both those commands resets that date index. So keep in mind, all I've done here is I grabbed everything that was in the January month of 2012, and then I reset the index. And then what I'm gonna do here is if I call info, I can see that my date column is still a date time object. So the next thing I'm going to do is once I have this date time object as a column, I'm going to say forward underscore reset. I'm going to create a new column called date underscore ax. Let me zoom in one more level here. Scroll up. So date underscore ax for axes. And then we're going to take the forward reset data frame again. I'm going to take my current date column and I'm going to apply the following lambda expression. My lambda expression is going to take in that date and then it's going to call date to num on it. And we'll see what that does in just a second. So run that. And then if you take a look at forward reset, just the head of the data frame, Notice that this date axis value is now a numerical value. And this numerical value is going to be part of what we give matplotlib. Matplotlib uh, doesn't do such a great job as pandas as far as directly interpreting a time series index. So one way to get around that is by actually just providing it this number. Now there's many ways to not have to do this, but this is kind of the simplest as far as a one-liner way of creating this candlestick chart. So we have this date underscore ax object that we'll continue to use. And then what we're going to do is finally create basically an array of tuple values. So we're going to say forward underscore values. And we're going to set that equal to, we'll call a tuple of vowels for vowels in 
forward reset and then the columns I want are my let's actually pass in a list of columns here in fact let's make this into a, a different variable so it's a little clearer so list of calls the ones I'm going to want are my date axes first and then it expects the open high low close in that order so we'll say open high low close so now I'm going to grab that list of columns from forward reset so basically I'm saying okay for the values in this list of columns what I'm going to end up doing is off of this I will call dot values to actually get those values out okay so what is that actually doing well if we take a look at forward values it ends up just being a list of tuples where the tuples are the individual row values for that list of columns. So I have this date axe object, the open price at that date axis object, the high price, the low price, and the closing price. And this is the kind of format that we can easily use with matplotlib, just a, a list or array of tuples. So we have these four values. Now all we need to do is set the ticks so we can plot it, which essentially is just going to be kind of just copying and pasting from what we have here, this weekday locator, day locator, date formatter, and date formatter. So we're gonna just copy and paste this directly from this example. And instead of on days, we can call this, uh, whoops, that's not on days, that should be Mondays. So that should be Mondays, we'll have all days, week formatter, day formatter. So everything there we'll use the same as in the example. And then what we're gonna do is actually come back to the example and we're also going to just copy and paste this from here. And this is the actual plotting formatter. So that sets all the axes, but right now there's nothing there. So the last thing we need to do is call candlestick. So that's this line right here, candlestick OHLC. So let's actually do that. We'll say candlestick OHLC, pass in AX, which is the axes this creates using these plt.subplots. We pass in the values we calculated, which is forward values. And then we can give it a width of 0 0.6. This is stuff you can play around with later on. And if we just stick with this and run this, we end up getting a bunch of outputs, but then we see the default here on the candlestick. So then the next thing we're gonna do is say, define color up to be green and the fine color down to be red. And let's put a semicolon here so we don't see that huge output. And there we have it. We have our candlestick chart. And you can mess around with this with parameter to kind of make these things a little wider. So if you want them to be a little skinnier, you can do 0 0.1 and you can see they're a little skinnier. Okay, so definitely a lot of new stuff there and a lot of stuff with matplotlib that we didn't discuss and is like very specific to this example. If you got stuck on this or having a hard time understanding it, really don't worry about it too much. This is not something we're gonna be focusing on in this course. Mainly this is just an exercise of, can I come over to a documentation example, check out some code and then kind of copy and paste it to apply it to my own situation. That's really what this is an exercise in. It's not an exercise of, can I immediately understand what this weekday locator is doing and what this kind of strange capitalized Monday is doing, which just adds major ticks on the Mondays and then minor ticks on the rest of the days. So again, don't worry too much about the actual code here. We're gonna be talking a lot more about candlestick plots later on, what they actually represent, how you can read them and better ways of making them without all this uh, stuff from matplotlib. Okay, so again, uh, this is mainly an exercise of can I come over to an example page, kind of copy and paste, format my data, and get a similar result using my own candlestick code versus actually understanding every single line and what it's doing. Okay, so let's move on to part three, which will be the next lecture where we actually go over some basic financial analysis.